Hey, welcome back to the channel. So here we are, 2022, it's a new year, so of course I gotta start that year off by talking about my trusty 2012 MacBook Pro back here. Every year I do a video to revisit this to tell you if it's still a good machine. Here we are, 10 years later after this machine got released, and honestly, I'm gonna give you a little spoiler alert here, this is the first year that it's kinda questionable whether you should get one of these. There's a few limitations I'm gonna go over, that uh, kind of impact the performance, even if you just wanna get that Mac experience on a cheap machine. But if you stay tuned till later in the video, I'm gonna show you how to overcome some of those limitations. Now, I usually like to start these videos off by talking about the specs, but in this case, I'm gonna start it off by talking about one of the limitations because you've probably noticed it already, and that is the video card that's in this machine. That screensaver back there is really struggling. Now, I am driving that ultra-wide monitor uh, from the MacBook Pro, so if you're running it just on the MacBook Pro, it's totally smooth, but if you're driving an external display, you can see how much it's struggling back there. It does just have the Intel HD, 4000 graphics. So that is a very old uh, integrated graphics card at this point. So modern applications, especially like video editing and uh, photo editing, things like that, you're gonna struggle a little bit. You can still do it on this machine, don't get me wrong. You just have to temper your expectations a little bit. Okay, so with that limitation out of the way, let's jump right into the specs and then talk more about this machine. So it has a dual core i5 processor. I upgraded it to 16 gigs of RAM and I also upgraded it to a 500 terabyte SSD drive. Now, if you get one of these with the base configuration with the four gigs of RAM and the spinning drive, first thing you need to do is just swap out that hardware, swap out the RAM and swap out the hard drive. It's gonna be like a whole new machine. 5400 RPM spinning drives are so painfully slow that swapping out that hard drive is gonna be the biggest improvement that you can make on this machine, and it is super, super easy. All right, so let's start this off by talking about the good. Now, the first thing is the price on these computers. You can find them for anywhere from $100 to $300, depending on the condition, you know, how much upgrade is done to it, and how, much, how long you're willing to hunt to find that $100 price, you're gonna to have to spend a little time and be patient to find one at that value. Uh, those are US prices, it may be different in your area. You can find them on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist or Gumtree if you're overseas or whatever service you use in your area to buy your used gear. So the price for these is uh, pretty decent. If you're gonna go over $300, just don't do it, haggle it down or whatever you need to do, but it's not worth it to spend more than, I would say even $250 uh, in my personal opinion. The next thing that's great about it is the upgradability. You can upgrade the RAM and the hard drive. Absolutely no problem. It's super, super easy to do. And like I mentioned earlier, that just gives you a huge performance boost when using this machine. So upgrades are super simple. The next good thing is the ports. We have two USB 3 ports, an SD card reader. Uh, we have a headphone jack, a mini display port that you can use a dis mini display port to a full size display port cable like I'm doing back here to hook it up to an external monitor. There is an ethernet jack and the MagSafe connector. Now, there's also a FireWire port. I don't know a lot of people that still use FireWire, but if you do, that's an option too. So there's quite a few ports on this that you know you don't really see until you know the most recent, very, very expensive MacBook Pros where they started bringing some of those ports back. So connectivity is not an issue with this machine. Now this is the 13 inch version, so the next positive thing I wanna talk about is the portability. It's very easy to take around and throw in a bag. Now it's very well built, very solid, and because of that, it's also pretty heavy, especially by today's standards, but if you don't mind the weight, uh, if you want something that's extremely durable and easy to just fit in any kind of bag you have, this is a good machine for that. It travels very, very well. Now the day-to-day -day performance on this machine is fantastic. If you're just browsing the web, doing office work, things like that, it works really, really well for a general computing computer. It works great uh, if you're doing gaming or media creation or anything like that. That's when you're gonna start hitting up some of those limitations. But if you're looking for a computer to just do general computing stuff on, this is a great option because of performs very, very well in that area. 
So now let's talk about some of the limitations of this computer. And the first thing that I already mentioned is the video card. That's an older video card. It's integrated. It's not a very good one by today's standards. Now you used to be able to do like media creation and stuff uh, using Apple software because it's optimized for Apple devices. Like Final Cut Pro worked really, really well on this computer. Uh, something like GarageBand, if you want to record in audio or, you know, sequence your own audio, that worked really, really well. I'm using past tense because if you go out to the app store now and try to download either GarageBand or if you try to download like the trial of Final Cut Pro to see if it works on here, you're not going to be able to install it because both of those require at least Big Sur, which officially <laughs> can't be installed on this machine. Remember I said officially, because I'm going to talk about that more later. The latest one that's officially supported on this computer is Catalina. So with Catalina, you'll have to find older versions of that software or use alternate software if you want to do media creation. So you can still load DaVinci Resolve on this computer that works pretty well. Uh, you're not going to be able to edit 4K without doing proxy files, but 1080p video uh, works very, very well. But just remember the limitations. It's older RAM, older processor, older video card. It's just an older architecture. So you're definitely going to hit some limitations. Now there's those of you that use these machines in your studios and stuff still that, and they work great. And that's awesome. If it works well for you, that's totally fine. But I'm talking to the people that are looking to get a machine to get into that kind of stuff. You may want to look elsewhere when looking at these computers. So the last area I want to talk about, and I got to talk about it in every video, is gaming. Now, as I always say, you'll be able to play some basic games, 2D games, things that are not very graphically intensive. Anything that is graphically intensive or especially like 3D games, they're not going to run on this or they're not going to run very well if they run at all. So if gaming is one of your criteria, this is not the machine for you for sure. Now there is a way to get around some of the limitations of the graphic card that's in this machine and that's by using an external GPU. I have a video on this that's pretty old now but it's the exact same steps to get it going even today. So I'll link that up in the corner but you can get an enclosure, put a modern graphics card in there and hook it up to the Mac and then hook it up to a monitor. So you're using the video processing of that newer card for your gaming video editing. It's going to drastically improve your performance in graphically intensive games like 3D games. And it's also, if you use DaVinci Resolve, going to drastically improve that performance because DaVinci Resolve is very GPU dependent. So that's one way to get around some of the limitations of the graphics card. You're still talking about an older bus, older processor, older RAM. So you still have those limitations. There's nothing you can do about it, but uh, that will boost your performance. Now, if you're looking to buy one of these computers and buy uh, eGPU enclosure and the graphics card that goes in there, just don't. Just buy something newer. Uh, you are probably going to spend about the same amount of money, but you'll have it all in one and you won't have to worry about all this extra equipment on your desk or wherever you're using this. So for people that already own this machine, you can boost your performance with the eGPU setup. For people that don't have this, if that's a priority for you, don't go down that route, just go a different route. So remember way back at the beginning of the video, I mentioned how I talk about some of the ways to overcome the limitations of this machine. Well, one of those is the eGPU that I already talked about. The second thing is the software version requirements that I kind of mentioned before. You know, the Apple software will only run on Big Sur or newer. It won't run on Catalina and older. Uh, other manufacturers are starting to put in limitations on their software that are similar to that. So what can you do on your MacBook Pro? Well, you can upgrade it to Monterey. Now, as of the time of this video, Monterey is the latest version of the Mac OS that's available, and it's not officially supported on these machines. The latest version that's officially supported is Catalina, but you can use the OpenCore Legacy Patcher to make a bootable drive for Monterey and install it on this computer. 
I've done that on this MacBook Pro and it works great. Everything is very, very fluid. You can download all that software. I was able to download the Final Cut Pro trial version, install it on here. I could install uh, GarageBand and, you know, the editing works. I can edit 4K video on this thing, you know, basic timelines, but you can edit 4K color correction, transitions, all that stuff on a 10 year old MacBook Pro with a dual core processor. Just kind of blows my mind, but it does work. And Monterey works great. Wi-Fi works, all the connections work, everything works very, very well. Now I'm working on a video where I talk about how Monterey run, runs on this. I talk about all the features and the, show some of the performance of this computer using the latest version of Mac OS. You'll be blown away, it works really well. So if you're interested in that, make it sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you get notified when I put that up. So here we are on the recommendation portion of the video and I am really struggling on this one because I love this machine, I wanna recommend it, but I'm having a really hard time this year. It's, it's different than other years because of those limitations. You can install Monterey on it, but I know a lot of people aren't gonna wanna go down that route. And if you do go down that route, it's not officially supported. So if something breaks, you're on your own. You're not gonna get any help from Apple on it. So. I'm kind of torn if you just need a basic computer to do basic computing stuff, browsing the web, doing office work, things like that, and you can get this for you know 100 to $200 US, I would say go for it. Uh, if you're looking at 300 up and above that range, I wouldn't get it. You can find something much better to do those basic computing things. Uh, if you're looking for a media creation device, um, uh, it depends on what you want to do. If you're doing 1080p uh, video or you're doing basic uh, picture editing and your videos are not very intricate, you can look at getting one of these. The problem with that is you are going to run into the limitations really, really quickly. If you're brand new at video editing, it might be fine for a while, but you're going to find quickly that you're going to need something a little beefier. So honestly, for any media creation or gaming, I would look at something newer. If you already own one of these, you can add an external GPU to you know, improve the graphics performance that's gonna help you with the video editing and gaming. But if you're just looking to get one, uh, that's just a whole rabbit hole that you don't need to go down. You can get something a little bit newer. If you really want a Mac, you wanna be part of that Mac ecosystem or you wanna use Final Cut Pro, I would honestly recommend looking at the M1 uh, Macs, you know, either a Mac mini or the MacBook Air. I had a MacBook Air for a while. I did video editing, 4K timelines, absolutely no problem whatsoever. It's a very, very powerful machine. The M1 Mac mini, you can get one for just a few hundred dollars more than this machine, and it's going to absolutely blow it out of the water as far as performance. So as much as I'd love to be able to say this is a good machine for anybody, I would say it's really only a good machine for people that just need a basic computer or just want a very basic introduction to the whole Mac ecosystem. Now again, I know there's people that have these, they use them every day, they use them in their studios, things like that, that's awesome. If it works for you, that's fantastic, but I can't really recommend it for people that are looking to buy one. Now hopefully you found this useful or informative. If you did, make sure you hit that thumbs up. If you really liked it, hit the subscribe and the notification bell so you know when I put a new one up. Like I said, I'll be putting that Monterey video out very soon. If you have any questions or comments, leave those down in the comment section below. And thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next video.